All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about two keywords. The first one is break, and the second one is continue. And these are actually some cool keywords that we can put inside a loop to make the loop do some cool things. So for this example, we're going to be building a very basic game, magic number, and set the number equal to anything from 0 to 100. I'm going to set mine equal to 26. So we'll say that the computer gave us this magic number. We didn't know what it was. Let's just pretend that we can't obviously see that it's 26 right now. But we'll say it gave us a number. And we have to build a loop to run through the numbers 1 to 100 and see if our number equals the magic number. Pretty much find the magic number. So we decide to first build a loop. So we're going to make a loop. Treat each number is n. And since we're looping through 100 numbers, we want to stop at 101. This is going to give us 0 to 100. So pretty much, we're going to loop through this. And n is going to be something from 0 to 100. Well, now we want to test if n is the magic number. So we make an if statement inside the loop. So if n is magic number, then that means that we found the magic number. So what do we want to do whenever we actually find the magic number? Well, we can just print out print. And I want to show you guys something real quick so this doesn't confuse you. And don't mind what I'm doing with these little quotes right now. Basically, well, I'll tell you guys. All right. <laughs> so let me show you. Oh. I keep like thinking of more stuff to tell you. So right now, your computer is going to read every single line, every single line of code, and it's going to execute it. Right here, it's going to set a variable equal to some number, so on and so forth. However, sometimes you're going to want to add little notes in your code, and these are just notes for um, developers and people to read, just like um, you know, little notes that you want the computer to ignore and not execute, but you need to have just so um, other developers and your coworkers can understand your code. This is called a comment. Now, whenever you make a comment on a single line, um, you can just write amp or hashtag the thing above the three and write any comment you want. Like, okay, this program finds a magic number. So now we can execute this program and whenever we do, whenever we do Whenever it gets to this comment, it's pretty much going to skip over it. So again, it's a way of adding a line of code for people that your computer skips over. Now, this hashtag right here, or number sign, is only for one line. Now, I want to show you guys another example. So what I want to do is I want to ignore all of these lines. So what I can do is I can add a hashtag at the beginning of every one but whenever we have a bunch of lines of code it can get kind of confusing so if you want to add a multi-line comment put three little single quotes where it starts and three little single quotes where it ends so again this is just because I wrote a piece of code and um, I go oh yeah I gotta teach you something else so I don't want to run this yet so now whenever I run this what our computer does is it basically just runs this line and ignores everything else. So again, that's your little mini tutorial on comments. Now here's the thing I wanted to teach you. You know how I told you guys that you can pretty much add together numbers like 5 plus 4, print out the answer, and you can also add together strings like Bucky plus Roberts. And whenever you add together strings, it's called concatenating a string. It pretty much um, takes two strings and puts them together. Well, what if you um, wanted to do something like uh, this? Bucky plus, for some reason, you wanted to write Bucky 9 instead of Bucky Roberts. Well, whenever you try to run this, check out what's going to happen. We're going to get an error, and that's because it says, okay, whenever I add strings together, just stick them together in a one big string. Whenever I add numbers together, just use math. But you're trying to add a string with a number. So what the heck am I supposed to do? You're kind of confusing me. That's why it gives us the error. So now I want to show you guys something else. 
Whenever we want to print out a number along with a string, what we need to do is this. We need to separate them with a comma instead of a plus sign. So plus is for only adding two things of the same data type together. If we ever wanted to write 9 Bucky or something like that, just write print 9, just like a number, and then print Bucky just as a string. Now whenever we run this, it prints 9 Bucky. So that's how we print out numbers on the same line as strings. Simple enough. So why am I telling you that? Well, because I was about to print out a number on the same line as a string, obviously. So what I want to do is, again, we have to remember, we have a magic number and we're looping through all the numbers 0 to 100 until we finally hit the magic number. So once we finally found it, print n, which is a number. Remember, it's a variable, but it's still a number. And then we'll print out something like is the magic number. Simple enough. Now, what we can do is we can just loop through this right now. And in the blink of an eye, what it did is it looped through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 until it got to 26. And once it got to 26, if 26 is the magic number, then print out 26 is the magic number. So now what I want to do is I want to tell you guys about the break statement and I'm actually going to finish writing my code and then I'll talk to you guys through it one last time. Alright, so as you can see real quick what I did is I added a few more lines to the code and the first one is to display the break statement. Now what the break statement or keyword does is it pretty much breaks out or stops your loop. Now why did I have this right here? Well, whenever we find the magic number, which is 26, there's no need to continue looping through all the other numbers. We know it's not 27, 28, 29, any of those, so why waste our computer's memory looping through numbers that um, it doesn't matter? So it says, okay, whenever you find the magic number, print this out right here, and then break, which pretty much means stop the loop. You can remember it because it means break out of the loop. Now this line of code right here is just to display that it actually breaks out. So every other number aside from the magic number such as 0, 1, 2, 3, it's going to print that out anyways and then once it finds it, it breaks out and stops printing. So you guys are going to see what's going on. So again it starts off just printing every single number right here because it tests if it's the magic number well it wasn't so I'll just print the number anyways and it does that all the way until it gets to 26 now at 26 n does equal to magic number so print n is the magic number and then break so that's why it doesn't print out 27 28 29 30 because what we did is we broke out of the loop which pretty much means says okay you can stop the loop now no need to waste your memory or your resources on anything else we already found the answer. So again, I know this was a uh, tutorial was a little longer than expected, but now we know about comments. Now we know how to use the break statement, and we even learned how to add a decision inside of a loop. How cool is that? So in the blink of an eye, your computer can make like 8,000 decisions, a lot faster than you know having to do it by hand. So, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned at least a little something. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And also, actually, I'm not going to let you go yet. Your homework assignment or your challenge, I'll call it that, is this make a program to loop through the numbers 1 to 100 and print out any number that is a multiple of 4. So, 4, 8, 12, 16, so on and so forth, but do it programmatically. Now, I'll give you guys a nice little keyword. If you take a number and divide it by four and what you have left is zero, again, remember the modulus sign is the remainder. So whenever you run this little statement right here, the numbers that you divide by four and have a remainder of zero are the numbers that are divisible by four. Simple enough. 
So if anyone can do that, then I will be incredibly impressed. But for now, that's your homework assignment. And once it's complete, post it on my forum, and then you're ready to move on to the next video. So I'll see you there.